One of the biggest arguments I tend to hear when it comes to why somebody should be a vegan, and by the way, I had a very close friend of mine, a couple friends of mine, and they were vegan. I said, why are you a vegan? And they said, for uh, for animal rights issues, we really feel it's the most ethical way of living. And I also want to say this, if you follow the Judeo-Christian faith, you wouldn't fully believe that because, you know, in Genesis 9, 3, God says, you know, e- you can eat these things. And so uh, we, we, we know that that's, you know, if it's that sort of morality, that's not the case. But if there's some another God or another, uh, you know, God of Gaia, the environment, if that's sort of, you know, a God you have, I also want to say that it's not good for, veganism is not good for the environment. It's not good for the environment. Anything that you, you're creating that's a processed food to that degree is going to harm the environment. And I want to read something that I think is really telling. By the way, my one of my best friends and business partners, Jordan Rubin, uh, by the way, him and I together, we own 4,000 acres of certified organic land where we practice regenerative agriculture, healing the planet, building back topsoil, making the earth and the uh, entire environment healthier, more like a paradise, a garden of Eden. That's what we're trying to do. Now, I want to read something here, very similar sentiments he has. I've heard him talk about, but this is by Isabella Tree. And here's what she says. I'm going to read some of the things that she, she talks about here. She says, natural grazing and Practicing regenerative agriculture uh, actually helps restore soil, biodiversity, pollinating insects, water quality, and flood mitigation. It also guarantees healthy lives for animals, and they in turn produce meat that is healthy for us. In direct contrast to grain-fed and grain-finished meat from these intensive systems, holy pasture Fed meat is high in beta carotene, calcium, selenium, magnesium, potassium, vitamin E, B vitamins, congelated linoleic acid, and many other nutrients as well. And these are many of the primary nutrients that vegans are deficient in. Now, they also go on to say, much has been made of the methane emissions of livestock, but these are lower in biodiverse pasture systems that include plants such as angelica and other plants that actually reduce carbon methane emissions by around 70%. Now, in the vegan equation, by contrast, listen to this, okay? The carbon cost of plowing is is rarely considered. Since the Industrial Revolution, according to a 2017 report in the science journal Nature, up to 70% of the carbon in our cultivated soils has been lost to the atmosphere. So here's the here's the big thing why veganism can be so bad for the environment is you are now planting corn in soy and annual crops that have to continually be replaced. And so what you're doing is you're tilling the soil. You're digging up the soil. You're digging up the plants. That's causing greater emissions than the animals and what they're able to actually restore to the earth. And so I want you to think about this. Here's what's happened. What, what, what top soil is very moist, very nutrient rich and things our plants can get a lot of nutrients from and animals can get nutrients from. Anytime an animal defecates on the soil, they're building back the top soil, which then is good for the environment and it's good for us. When you have to continually sort of every year redig up the soybeans and corn and other foods, you're you're giving off these emissions. You're also lessening the topsoil. So our actually plants and foods become less nutrient dense, lower in magnesium, lower in zinc, lower in vitamin C, lower in all of these nutrients. And here's the other thing. When you're planting all of these fields to feed people, you're also depl- displacing animals like wild animals like bison. So it is by far worse for the environment to be a vegan. Listen, a vegan that is consuming soy, pea protein and soy protein and canola oil and corn and all of these things you find in in vegan products today. And so it's just an important thing to understand here when we're looking at the studies. And so I just wanted to share that because that is one of the biggest arguments I hear on a regular basis. But the reality is, it's not, it's not the reality. That's the reality. It's in the reality. Here, here's what the ideal looks like. Regenerative agriculture. When you have animals that are grazing wildly, 
or something called in, in New Zealand, they have what's called ultra high density grazing method where they can sort of graze and then you put them in a different field in a different field, these animals. And when animals are just treated well for, for the majority of their lives, and then we use their, 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 their tissue for meat and for us to consume to nourish us, that's really the ideal. And if you can have animals there along with the plants you're growing, what happens is those, those, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the animals like, cows, they're able to actually nourish the soil. Those soil, the healthy soil nourishes the plants that then nourishes us. It's the circle of life. I, I am not against somebody that is a vegan. Okay. I think that I have friends that are vegans and vegetarians, and I have some people that are carnivore. They only eat meat. So I have all ends of the spectrum. I just want to say this, eating any processed vegan food is not healthy for you and it's really really terrible for the planet as well versus if you're doing it the right way where you're doing mostly vegetables fruits beans whole grains nuts and seeds and mushrooms that's the right way to do it that are completely natural unprocessed mm -hmm.